All right, what's up everyone? So this is gonna be a new style video. So at MIC, we're always trying to improve. We're always trying to give you the best resources possible to become the best trader possible. So in addition to the normal psychology videos on YouTube, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start doing these uh, daily, possibly weekly trade recap videos. So let's get started. So before we get into the questions and everything else that comes with this video, I wanna talk about one thing that I think is gonna get you guys really excited. So number one is we are hosting a live trading event again on April 25th on Zoom. So this is completely free for MIC annual and MIC lifetime members. So if you are an MIC annual or you are an MIC lifetime member on April 25th, you get to watch me and Bao trade live. We will be doing a screen share. We will record our screens. We will walk you through how we build a watch list and execute these trades. So mark your calendars, April 25th, live trading Tuesday. So that's number one. Number two is I'm gonna pass it over to Joe, who is going to announce a new feature for MIC. So Joe, take it away, bro. What's up, guys? How we doing today? So we're gonna flip the screen share here and we're gonna show you the latest and greatest for MIC. What you are seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is the next step in providing some of the best day trading education out there. A lot of people are unsure about MIC, but as you know, we are one of the top notch peoples out there providing top notch education. And top notch memes. Don't forget the memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So our team, all the mods, everyone involved, junior mods included, they are now going to be posting everything on the MIC blog. This is perfect whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned trader looking to sharpen the skills. You're going to go through here and you're going to see everything from basics to some of the most advanced techniques and you can search everything you want. This is going to be updated on a weekly basis and sometimes even daily, but there's categories to go along with everything. We are now transcribing our After Hours podcast as well. So if you're somebody like me, that likes to be able to read it while I listen to it and take notes as I go along, these are gonna be perfect for you. Those, as you can tell, we've been hard at work on that, but there's 15 pages of posts on here right now. You can search by authors. There will be more authors as this comes along. This is brand new, just coming out. We're super excited about it and we hope you guys like it. So go check it out at myinvestingclub.com slash blog also joe i think you should show them an example of like one of the blogs that like has to do with like on the categories there you got stock basics tips and tricks so not only is this a place for general information this is also going to be a place where you could find an encyclopedia of day trading terms so not only do we have our video library organized and categorized and you know uh searchable via video topic now, if you're more of a learner that likes to read your content rather than watch your content, we now have day trading guides for you as well. Exactly. Yep. All of these, the videos that they're linked to will also be at the top of the post as well. So if there's any kind of YouTube content that we've created in the past, it's going to be linked inside the blog as well. That way that you can jump to the video if it's out there for the public to see all the notes to go along with it. And as you click down here, you can navigate through the entire blog post right there along with everything on the side. So it's a fully interactive table of contents. We did our best to make this thing state of the art and uh, we look forward to you guys giving your positive feedback here. Now, Joe, I have a question. If So right now, mods could write blog posts, but what about members? Do we have a feature for members to start uh, contributing as well? There is no feature right now for members to contribute to it, however, there is a comments and interactive section that will be labeled on every single blog post that's coming probably in the next couple of months. That way that if you have questions and you're not a member and you have a question about something written in that blog post, you can write it in there and then all, the team of mods for MIC will answer it. And then later in the future, there will be an option for members themselves to create their own blog page. So that is a feature coming in the future. 
Exactly. So not only guys will you be able to read, you guys will be able to learn. Maybe your biggest takeaways you could leave as a comment, just like Nancy did when she was going through all of our videos. And then in the future, this opens up for you guys to not only share your plans, maybe you can post watch this over there, but you know, grow your own following using our blog. So today I didn't really trade anything uh, because I was just a little bit shell shocked. So let me kind of talk about that first and then we'll get into some questions from you guys. So as you guys know, we just had a three day weekend for Easter. And what ends up happening is trading is all about your routine. So if you wake up every single day at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., you're going through routines, going through the routines, it's almost like you do it as an instinct. Trading becomes so much of an instinct that you don't even think about it anymore. You just wake up and do the thing. But after a long weekend, I kind of hesitated. I felt like I was not in my routine. I felt like I wasn't really being myself. I felt like it's like imagine if every single day you're waking up to exercise at 6 a.m., and now instead of waking up to exercise at 6 a.m., you're waking up to have your Easter feast from your grandma. You're waking up to have the leftovers the next day. You're waking up, you kind of lose your routine. So I felt like I lost my routine today. And because I felt that way, I kind of hesitated. I hesitated and decided, you know what? I don't think I'm going to place a trade today. And that's something that I've been trying to do a little bit of a better job this year specifically, especially with this $35,000 account challenge, is I want to be a little bit more selective. You know, as traders, you know, someone like Bao trades all day, every day. He'll trade 10 different stocks a day. But the way that I trade, you know, I like less is more. So I've been trying to show you guys by leading by example that just because stocks are moving every single day does not mean that we have to find a trade every single day. And yes, there's been some good opportunities today, like ONCS, you know, after a tank, you know, short in the bounce. GFAI, you know, after we had some sort of death candles, after we had some sort of confirmation, sure, this to me looks like a death candle. This looks like a confirmation to me. Broke the support as well. So I would say this is a pretty solid trade. But anyway, point is, guys, that I didn't feel it today. And trading is about feeling, not only feeling confident, but feeling like you have an edge. And today, after a long weekend, I just didn't feel it, man. I really just didn't feel it. So rather than trying to force a trade, rather than trying to um, flex my muscles, I say, you know what? I'm just going to sit back and watch today. And that's a lesson that I kind of want to emphasize on today's recap is not all days require you to trade. Not all days require you to force. If you are uncomfortable, if you are fighting with your girlfriend, if you're fighting with your significant other, if you are having a bad day, if you just got into a car accident, you got a flat tire, whatever it may be, that may be your trigger to, you know what, take it slow. Because what ends up happening is we take those extra emotions with being uncomfortable, being annoyed, and flex them into the market. And the market is the biggest equalizer because it doesn't give a shit about your mood. It will keep destroying you. So for me, I didn't fight with my girl. I didn't fight with my parents. I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed after a long, relaxing weekend, stuffing my face with grandma's Easter food that I said, you know what? Rather than trying to trade, I'll just take it a little bit easy today. So that's kind of the lesson that I want to show you guys. So do you guys understand that how many of you guys have, you know, had that experience where, you know, you said, you know what? I probably shouldn't have traded today and I would have done better. And after nine years of trading and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, you know, the lessons are finally starting to stick to me. So as your leader, as your mentor, my biggest thing is I want to lead by example. And if I'm not feeling too hot, I'm probably not going to take a trade. Yes, there are certain days that I make an exception. And yes, no one is perfect. I'm a human. I'm, I'm a mess sometimes. But in the long term, if you're really not feeling it and the opportunities are kind of feel a little bit sketchy, don't feel like you have to force. Take some time off. So that's lesson number one starting this video. So do you guys have any questions on that before we move on to the next topic? Cool. Kind of want to open it up to you guys with questions that you have. So let me see. Do you use volume along with the resistance tops to pick a good resistance point? Is volume important? Yes, volume is important. As you can see, like look at GFAI here, guys. GFAI on volume, it had a death candle. So volume is very important to pay attention to. These videos will be a lot more intuitive and a lot more detailed when I kind of have my trade reviews up here to kind of review the trade all together as a group. 
But today, because there wasn't really much trades, I just wanted to kind of go over, you know, the mental side of what I was feeling. If you were still doing the 35,000 to 1 million challenge, do you think you would have tried to push through today? Not really, because that is even more of a reason to not push because I have to be even more selective trading like that, you know? As traders, we have this false notion that we must be trading at every moment and every day because the real world has programmed our brain to say, I have to show up and if I work, I get a paycheck. In trading, the longer you work, the less of a paycheck you are guaranteed because the robots are going to take all your money away. So trading is a little bit counterintuitive as the fact that less is more. Less is more. From knowing the stocks bounce or reject from these key lines, I have annoyingly started to trade short and long stocks and always result in overall losing days. My assumption, Aaron, I am assuming, is you're probably buying the breakout and shorting the tank when you should be shorting the bounce and covering the dip. So that's what I'm assuming. You could correct me if I am wrong. But what I assume is that you are doing the opposite. Can you talk about when you start taking profit? I'm either late or too early. So profit is just based on the chart, right? So it depends on the on support and resistance. So for example, let's pretend like we're trading GFAI, right? So GFAI, we see resistance here around 1775. So if you're shorting 1775, your support would be your uh, cover target. Let's say you're shorting the bounce here at 17 after the death candle. You're shorting 17 after the death candle. Hey, if support is here at 1650, you could take off a little bit of support at either A, set a stop at break even, or B, set your other target to the next support line. So your target or your, your profit target or your exit should always be based on the chart. It should never be based on your artificial arbitrary price target in your head. So question about locates, guys, Ed. I'm going to just show you, come to the library, right? Locate, how to determine when to locate shares and how to not lose money on locating shares. So what I'm going to do guys, is I'm going to link this for you. And uh, so you guys have it handy. If you guys ever have any questions on the video library. Next, uh, I find myself stopping out more size, uh, than my winners like AMC and G GCTK. I had 30, 40% size. But last week, my winners were mostly on 10% size. How do you navigate this problem? So as simple as it sounds, it looks like you are adding more size to your losers and not adding enough size to your winners. So my challenge to you would be on AMC and GCTK to not go above that 30% size and on those 10% of the winners that you have or on the winners that you have to go larger than 10%. So first things first is what is the 10% of the stocks that you win on. What is the stocks that you are making the most money on? Is it the low hanging fruit? Is it a death line? Is it option? I don't know what that answer is, but what stocks are you making the most money on? And use larger size on those rather than the losing stocks that you're adding to kind of maybe get yourself out of a hole. So does that make sense? All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this replay for members inside MIC and you guys will be able to access this together on April 25. We're going to have a live trading for annual lifetime members. And let me know what you guys think of this. You guys like these types of recaps. I know today was kind of weird because I didn't really trade today. Um, when I have trades, it'll be more in depth, higher level trade recaps, everything. And I'm going to try to do these as often as possible because I think this will really help accelerate your guys' learning curve. So appreciate it. And I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow. I'll see you guys for live trading and let's just trade well and back to business. Thanks.